So once again, thank you very, very much for coming. The purpose of Q2B is to bring together the quantum computing community, that is all of the people developing hardware, algorithms, and software, together with the commercial enterprises and the government laboratories and eight research agencies, to get all of them together and have a mashup, and to spend a couple days together every year comparing notes and collaborating and doing the thing that really needs to be done in quantum computing, which is developing useful applications. So before we kick off today, and we're going to have two very, very uh, busy days of, uh, of collaboration, let me just go through a couple things. First of all, we'd like to thank our host, NASA, for putting this all together, or at least for making available this great conference facility. And NASA is the appropriate agency to host this event for a couple of reasons. First of all, NASA had the foresight already back in 2010 and 2011 to recognize that quantum computing was going to be a very, very important computational resource, and they started planning to form a team already then before the rest of Silicon Valley, or for that matter, anyone in the computational community really started to seize upon that. So they invested in that resource quite early. The other reason that NASA is really a great place to do this is that within Ames Research Center, the whole DNA of the place is to incubate and stimulate emerging technologies. Quantum computing is just the latest such technology that, that this applies to. So tomorrow, Rupak Biswas and Eleanor Riefel from NASA are both going to talk about um, what Ames is doing um, in the quantum computing front and more broadly. The other groups that we want to personally thank are the commercial organizations that made this possible through financial and business support. And first of all, I want to thank very much Google, and in particular, Alan Ho, for inside of Google, pushing through a sponsorship package, which really enabled this conference to happen. And right on the heels of that were other true industry leaders who are pushing forward in quantum computing in a very aggressive and deliberate way, and that includes Atos, Volkswagen, and D-Wave. Um, so thank you very much for all of you for doing that. And I'd also like to call out a, uh, a hardware startup called AeroQ, which also made a financial contribution to allow this conference to happen. But the biggest thank you is to the 250 plus attendees who decided on very short notice, we pulled this together within three months, to attend this. We've got over 130 enterprises who are attending this. We've got over 20 government laboratories and research centers that are attending. We have venture capital firms and academic institutions. And that's exactly the set of organizations, the kind of ingredients that you need to make a conference like this worthwhile. You need all of those stakeholders getting together. So we really want to thank all of you. And we definitely want to thank all of the speakers, particularly the from industry, <coughs> who have come to make this possible. So let's go through really, really briefly what we're going to be doing. If you were not here tomorrow, you missed a great boot camp where it was a kind of a zero to 60 review of the basis of quantum computing. Don't worry, QCWare will be uh, repeating this um, routinely throughout this year and next year as part of kind of an educational outreach program. But today, we're going to kick off with a keynote address by John Preskill, who I'll be introducing very, very quickly here. Um, John is going to talk about the ground truths of quantum computing to help that set the stage for what the facts are about this new technology. And then for the rest of the day, we're going to go up the technology stack in quantum computing. So first, we're going to have Google talking about circuit modeler digital quantum computing, followed by D-Wave talking about the other predominant architecture, which is annealing or analog quantum computing. We're going to spend the rest of the morning going through a couple of the primary quantum algorithms that run on this hardware and that enable application development to happen. And then in the afternoon session, we're going to get to the meat of this, which is industry groups, including Volkswagen, Airbus, Goldman Sachs, and IBM, are going to be talking about real-world applications that they're exploring in their respective domains. Following that, we've got something really exciting, and that is one of the large forces that's driving technology development in quantum computing is investment by public sector enterprises globally. And this is, this is really important, and we have senior representatives from the United States, from the European Union, and from China that are going to be talking about their respective strategic quantum computing efforts, 
And this is really going to be a fascinating set of talks. Now, because in this room this is effectively a two-level quantum system, ha-ha, we've decided to name the happy hour that we're going to have over there the excited state happy hour. So you'll all be wound up by about 5.30 p.m. today. Go over there and you'll go from your excited state after a couple of beers or glass of wine, you'll bring it down to a relaxed state, and then you'll go back home. When you come back tomorrow morning, we're going to be doing a deeper dive into hardware architectures. So we'll be, talk, we'll be having talks from Atos, IBM, Microsoft, and IonQ. And then we're going to have a, a venture capital talk by Sean McGuire at GV that's going to talk about the, the landscape for investment opportunities in quantum computing hardware and software. And following that, we're going to have panels on quantum computing hardware, software, and venture capital. And after that, everyone will be free to retire and tell Q2B 2018. So very, very quickly, what do we hope you walk away with and what are the real motivations for this conference? The most important thing we want to help promote over the next two days is to stimulate application development. And again, the best way to do this is to bring all these stakeholders together. So that's the number one objective. The number two thing that we want to do is make everyone familiar with the fundamentals of what this new computing technology is capable of doing currently and what it's not capable of doing, so we can focus our attention on the right things. The third thing we want to do is make people acquainted with what the state of technology development is with very specific hardware platforms and very specific quantum algorithms. And then finally, and this is the most important thing, quantum computing as a technology resource has emerged from the theoretical and experimental physics network. And this community of researchers is globally linked and really tightly linked. And there are some very deep long-term friendships and a lot of trust that's built into this network. And that's really been a key for quantum computing to emerge from the laboratory. There are all these really good relationships and a lot of information sharing in that whole thing. That's what the spirit is right now in quantum computing. And that's what I think everyone in this room really wants to maintain. It's meant to be collaborative. This is not meant to be one dominant party trying to pull ahead of everyone else because that's not going to work. And I think everyone in these conversations has all agreed that if the tide rises, all of the boats that are sitting on the surface of water are going to rise together. And so we really want this conference to preserve that. 